Okay, welcome back. In this part, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic environment for your animation. So let's get started. First, let's go back into object mode if you're in pose mode right now. So we're going to go back into object mode and then I'll bring back the reference picture from the previous parts. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete it since we don't need it anymore. So X delete. Now for the environment, it's just going to be a basic cube. So let's do shift A, add in a mesh cube. We can go into wireframe mode and then let's go to the front view and we're going to go into edit mode. We're just going to turn on the snapping tool for a second and just bring it up with the move tool. This will bring it above this origin point right here, which will make it easier to scale. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go back into object mode and then we will just scale it up. I'm going to use the scaling tool right here. Click and drag on this white circle to scale it up. I'm also going to scale it on the X axis as well. Then I'll use the move tool and just move it over. Let's zoom in and uh, we want to make sure the bottom of the legs of our model is not clipping through the mesh right now. So let's select our model. Or let's select the armature. Let's move it up. And now it should be above. A little more. We can hold shift. Oh, you know what? Let's turn off the snapping tool. And then we can click on this and then hold shift for slow movement. I think that works. Okay, now let's go to the minus X view. And we're also going to scale it on the Y axis. So click on your cube. We'll go back to the scaling tool. And we'll scale it on the Y axis as well. I'm going to bring up a menu on the side here by hitting N. Go to the item. Okay, now let's just scale it on the Y axis. We can also just scale it over here. I'm going to make it about 300 meters. Okay, nice. Now we're just going to reset the scale here. Again, that's always good practice whenever you're going to apply some sort of texture on it. So just hit Control A to apply the scale. That'll reset the scale here. Okay. Now we can zoom in to our model. Let's go into solid mode. And then with our cube selected, we're going to go into edit mode. Then we'll use the face select tool and just select each of the faces and separate them. So let's select this face, hit P separate selection, select the bottom face, P separate selection, this face, P separate selection, and the top P separate selection. Now, if you go back into object mode, you'll have four separated objects in your scene right here. We're going to rename them. So let's click on this wall right here and we're going to rename it by hitting F2 and we'll rename it to wall right. This bottom object here is our floor. So we'll rename it to floor. This is going to be our left side wall. So rename it to wall left. And then our ceiling up here, F2 ceiling. Okay, now let's go into rendered mode to see what our scene is looking like. So we can hit Z and then instead of going to material preview, we're going to go into rendered mode. You can see our scene is looking pretty bland right now. So we need to add lights and some sort of textures on our walls here. So we'll start with the right wall here. Click on your right wall and we are going to use the shader editor for this. So instead of going to the shader tab over here, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the top right right here and then click and drag to open up a new window. I find this to be a lot easier and a faster workflow instead of going to the shading tab. So we can go to the shader editor right here, hit N to close that menu. And then we can also hit N over here. So we can see the wall here better. We're going to add a new material to our right wall. So now we have a new material for our wall and it automatically gives us this default principle BSDF. We're not going to use this, so I'm just going to hit X to delete it. I want this wall to glow here. To make it glow, we need to use a node called the emission node. So hit Shift A and then search for emission. Click and then plug the emission into the material output. Now the wall is glowing and you can control the strength of the glow using the strength right here. So right now, the wall is this glowing white color, and you can change the color right here to any color you like, for example, blue. But instead of doing that, I want to add some different patterns on the walls, some glowing patterns. So to do that, we need to use a texture. 
but we're not going to be using an image texture. Instead, we're going to be using a texture that Blender offers. So hit Shift A and we'll search for something called a Voronoi texture. And we'll plug the color into the color. And now we got some sort of pattern on our wall here. Now, I don't want the pattern to be as, you know, sharp as this. I want it to be a little more smoother. So I'm going to change this to smooth F1. We're also going to change this to Chebyshev. Let me just turn down the strength for a second. And you can see it a little better. We can also mess with the scale here. So let me increase the scale to something like 12. And now we can see the patterns a little better. Let's see what the detail does. The detail, I guess, really just ups the brightness a bit. It also adds like a little more lines. Maybe we can change this to 15. And now it looks like there's a lot more details on the wall. I'll change the roughness, see what that does. Maybe to like 0.3. And the randomness here makes the wall, you know, the lines a little more straight. So I'll add a bit more randomness to it. And the smoothness here, you can, you can put it back to zero, which makes, you know, the lines a little more sharp, kind of like some sort of paint. But you know what, I'll keep it on completely smooth. Okay, now I need the pattern to move because right now if you hit play on your animation, nothing's really happening except, you know, the little arm movement on our robot. We want the patterns on the wall to move. To do that, we need to add in two more nodes. Now to easily add in two more nodes, we can manually add them like this, or there's an easier way to do this. We can just go to edits, preferences, and then we can go to add-ons, and then we can just go and search for node wrangler and then you want to make sure this is checked so for you it's going to be unchecked so just check it and then hit save preferences and you can close out of that and then all that does is if you click on this texture right here and then hit Control t on your keyboard it'll automatically add in these two nodes right here the texture coordinate and mapping node these nodes are what's going to allow us to move the patterns on the wall so if you move it right here you can see that it'll start to move you can hold shift for slower movement and you can see what it does. So we're going to need to keyframe this. To keyframe it, we can just, you know, go to frame one and we'll start it at zero. Instead of adding a traditional keyframe, there's actually a different option for this to loop continuously. We can actually click on the Y and then type in hashtag frame divided by, let's say, 30. And if you hit enter, you can see that the pattern is moving, but we want it to move in the opposite direction. So right now it's moving in this direction. We want it to move in the opposite direct, in the opposite direction. So let's change this to minus 30. And there we go. Now we have some cool movement on our wall here. If you want it to go slower, you can change this value to let's say minus 100. The higher the value, the slower the animation on the wall. So now it's very slow, but I want to simulate super fast motion. So I'm just going to keep it at minus 30. I'm going to change the randomness down a little bit as well. Okay. And that's pretty much it. You can change the emission back to one. That's pretty much it for this. Now you can actually change the colors on the wall. If you really wanted to, if you don't want it to be multiple colors, there's actually a different option. You can actually go right here and add in something called a color ramp. If you want to add in your own colors. So shift a add in a color ramp. And this is just optional. You don't have to do this, but if you plug it in between, now you have these gray colors but you can go ahead and just select this right here and then click on this black part. And then you can change the color to whatever you like, say blue. And then you can change this to like a dark color. And then, you know, you can mess around with the brightness here and it does the same thing. You can also add in more colors by hitting this plus icon. And then you can change this to like something like red and it'll just add in or something orange. Let's go red or mix of that. And then, you know, you can see that it just changes the color here. But again, that's just optional. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. We'll just stick with the, you know, multiple colors for now. Let's just uh, move these together. And we're going to change the material over here and rename it to wall lights. Enter. Okay. Now let's select our floor here. And we also need to give it a material. So click on new. And for the floor, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to give it a super reflective material. So we're going to change the roughness to, you know, 0 0.1. It's hard to see. And that's because, you know, we don't have 
a option called ray tracing on. So if you go to the render properties right here, you can just turn on ray tracing. We're using the EV render engine, by the way. So if you turn on ray tracing, you'll start to see reflections. But before you click on this, just make sure you hit the save button in case you know your blender crashes. And then you can go ahead and just click on ray tracing. And boom, now we got some reflections on the floor. I still think the floor could use its own sort of texture as well. So I'm going to add some scratches to the floor. So it'll help sell the fact that the robot is moving really fast. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and hit Shift A and we'll add in an image texture. And then we'll just slap on some sort of scratching picture and then just plug in the color into the base color. Okay. Now it's like completely black, but that's okay. We can just go on open and we'll go to textures. And I'll leave a link in the description for the same texture that I'm using. It's this, you know, sort of scratchy texture where, you know, we have scratches on the floor. Uh, so link in the description, make sure you download it and then save it to a folder. I saved it in a folder called textures. Just click on that and then hit open image. And now you'll see the texture, but it's a bit stretched on the floor here. So to fix that, we can just go into edit mode and then we'll hit A to select everything and we need to unwrap it. So to unwrap it, you can just hit U on your keyboard and then just hit, there's a bunch of different options to unwrap. We'll just use the basic Q projection. So it's still not unwrapped properly. So we can fix that by going into the UV editor and we can zoom out and see exactly what's going on. So we want this to fit the entire frame here. So hit A and then S on your keyboard and then X to scale on the X axis. And then hit S and X again and we'll just scale it till it fits. And now we can kind of see the scratch a little more, but we can actually scale it by hitting S again, and then we'll just scale it up. And boom, you got some scratches on the floor here. If you hit play, nothing's happening. And that's because we need to make sure these scratches move on the floor as well. So if you remember how to do that, let's go back to the shader editor. And it's a similar process. You just click on your uh, image texture right here, and we're just gonna hit Control T to add in those two nodes. These two nodes are what allows us to move our image texture. So again, we're just going to use the Y right here and we'll do the same thing. We're just going to do hashtag frame divided by minus 30. Enter. Now, if you play, it's moving. I kind of want it to move faster. So instead of minus 30, let's do minus 10. Enter. There we go. That's way faster. Okay. We can go ahead and rename this material to floor scratches, enter. And then we can click on our left wall here and we can just apply that wall lights material. So let's go to wall lights right here, apply that. And for our ceiling, we could just, let's go ahead and just add the scratches texture, floor scratches. There we go. Now we don't really need the shader editor anymore. So we can just go ahead and click over here and drag to the right like this. And now we can see our entire scene. Uh, I still want to add in some more light to our robot here because he seems a little bit dark. Uh, so to add in some more light, I'm just going to hit shift A on my keyboard and I'm going to add in a area light. We'll use the move tool and we'll just move it up. And I'm going to just, let's just move it to the side, maybe up a little more and I'll use the rotate tool and I'll rotate it. So let me just rotate it like this and point it at my robots. The lights, the power is at 10 watts right now. We need it to be a lot. So let's do 1000 watts. And that's a lot of light right there. We can actually increase the size a little bit as well, like three. If you're finding this tutorial series helpful so far, make sure to hit that like button right now and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future tutorials. In the next part, I'm going to show you how to do some dynamic camera animation. See you all in the next part.